Hello, my name is Lucas. This is Bit of Lit, and I'm here to talk about The Flowers of War by Jan Gerling. Uh, and this book was made into a movie by Zhang Yimou. Uh, not too sure how to say his name. I didn't check that one before. Uh, that movie stars Christian Bale, apparently. Uh, here's a photo of Yan Gerling. Uh, it's a younger woman. Uh, she published her first novel in 1985. Uh, she also writes short stories, essays, scripts, other novels, and she writes in English, too. I believe she's also American, um, from what I saw online. Uh, this was translated by Nikki Harmon, uh, published by Random House, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, Nikki Harmon is a London-based translator of Chinese. You can tell that she's British by other words she uses. Um, this book, uh, she has other works, White Snake and Other Stories, translated, that is, uh, The Lost Daughter of Happiness and The Uninvited, and, uh, yeah, Harville Secker, London, okay, so, yeah, published by Harville Secker, and, uh, yeah, in 2012, this came out, I believe it looks like it came out in 2006, uh, in Chinese, maybe, and, uh, yeah, this book, you can see this beautiful woman here, and the horrors of war here, some soldiers. Uh, this book is set in Nanjing in 1937. And if you know anything about uh, Nanjing, uh, during this time, uh, during sort of World War II era, uh, Japan, uh, Imperial Japan, is uh, laying waste to the Chinese and, you know, the whole area trying to take as much as it can. Uh, and the soldiers, in particular in Nanjing, there's a book I haven't read, but I'm going to read it after this, now that I've uh, read this, um, that goes into excruciating detail about the things that uh, Imperial Japanese soldiers were up to in this city. None of it's good. Uh, this book is quite... You know, I wouldn't say that it goes into graphic detail, but you get an idea of the genuine terror and horror uh, and deceitfulness uh, uh, and just, it's a really terrifying book in many ways and depressing and painful. Uh, it's a great book though. I recommend anyone read it, um, especially if you're interested in, you know, uh, historical fiction, uh, or, you know, Chinese literature, or literature that has war in it. I, I don't know why you would necessarily be interested in that, but uh, it, is, it is quite good. It's uh, really dark, though. You don't see, it's all a lot of, uh, I mean, there's murder in this. That is quite graphic, but uh, it, the details are not... Uh, in depth, and some of the horrible things that were done to women are sort of implied, or but you don't see it. So, you know, keep that in mind. Anyway, time to talk about the book. Like I said, it's set in Nanjing. Um, this woman, I believe, is Yumo, uh, and she is the top woman out of the Qinghuai uh, River brothel. And... Um, she brings 13 other women with her, and they seek refuge in a church, uh, which has a few people there, and is also a school for some wealthy kids, uh, girls in particular. And this causes some problems because they do manage to find refuge there, uh, and they stay down below, uh, hidden away, um, because the father feels a bit uncomfortable, though he does want to help. Um, but a bit uncomfortable given their uh, profession. And, um, but he's still, you know, still a compassionate guy. So he's not gonna, he doesn't turn them away, even though he, you know, he's a bit worried about food and water and, and these kind of things. And that does become a legitimate problem. Uh, and it causes some kind of, you know, given the situation, kind of petty rivalries between the young girls that are students uh, and the women, uh, and the women are foul-mouthed and 
charming in a way. They're kind of funny. Uh, you know, they've lived a hard life and uh, are used to being looked down upon uh, because of their profession. Uh, so they uh, have a certain attitude in the way they carry themselves and respond to uh, what people say to them. And uh, I quite admire them. Um, they can be, uh, you know, funny, charming in a way. Um, we get a little bit of backstory for some of the women. Uh, Cardamom, who's quite young and actually younger than one of uh, some of the students there. Um, and then uh, Gongling and, and Yumo and uh, Jade and uh, there's a few more. We don't get to uh, Anne, Annie or something like that. Uh, it's escaping me right now. Uh, we don't get to learn about every single one of them. It's quite a short book. It's about 250 pages. Uh, we do get to learn about the, uh, some of them in the background, what motivates them. So that's great. Um, and we also learn about the priest and Fabio, who works with him, who's an American there, uh, who was raised by Chinese. And uh, uh, Agu, who is a worker. And then there's George, who is Chinese, but uh, was the cook. And a little bit later, we see some Chinese soldiers uh, sneak their way in to try and seek refuge as well. They have escaped uh, from a horrifying uh, death trap for prisoners of war. They've been tricked by the Japanese uh, that they outnumbered, but they didn't know that they outnumbered them because of a trap uh, that was set for them. So they gave up and then they were all brought uh, basically to the side of a river to be slaughtered when they were lied to and told, oh, we're going to bring you to some boats and, you know, deal with you <laughs> in a much different way than we're actually going to deal with you. Uh, a few of them escape uh, this horrifying scene and they seek refuge as well. The father is even more reluctant to help them because he wants this place to stay safe because if he brings in some Chinese soldiers, uh, the Japanese soldiers, if they find out, uh, will no longer see it as neutral territory uh, and feel free as if they didn't already feel free to do exactly as they want. Uh, because as one of the, one of the uh, interpreters says uh, for one of the officers, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter if someone loses control uh, because if someone in the army loses control because that'll fall, the people at the top are gonna say, you know, just make some excuses and then nobody's actually going to get uh, investigated for their actions and then there's going to be no consequences to anything that happens and uh, yeah it's quite <sighs> horrifying and there's all kinds of lying and manipulation of uh, other Chinese soldiers and anyway uh, the father ends up allowing the Chinese soldiers to stay uh, and they have their fun with the women and, you know, we get to learn about their backstories as well. And um, a lot of them become quite close. There's some rivalry among the, among the girls. Uh, there's a whole side plot about one girl who's got a rich father who can get them out with, and she promises to help somebody uh, escape, some other girl to escape. And this is, becomes a huge issue and feels there's like some betrayal going on and this kind of thing. Um, they go through a really tough time. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's a great book. I'm going to spoil a little bit more right now. So uh, I recommend reading if you're interested in anything I just said. I'm going to spoil the rest of it now to talk about it because it uh, is painful. It's a really painful book. Uh, so anyway, eventually the Japanese soldiers barge into the uh, church territory and are looking for Chinese soldiers. And the, the soldiers try to hide away uh, in a way and they take off their clothes and try to change and act like just civilians and the 
father tries to protect them. Um, you know, I mean, they've already been having issues with food and water and other people that have worked in the church have died be trying to find more food or water. Uh, so they've already lost lives, but the father really doesn't want to lose anybody else, even though he was trying to stay neutral with the Chinese soldiers. He's saying, no, they were just civilians. And, uh, well, you can imagine once the Japanese soldiers find out, they say, oh yeah, uh, we heard about two people from the 5,000 prisoners of war that we captured. Uh, two people managed to escape. It's these two and this other guy. Uh, they kill the wrong person and they then brutally, brutally murder uh, the two Chinese soldiers that they found. Uh, and then don't, I mean, like I said, they just do as it please, there's no such thing as Geneva Convention to them. The prisoners of war uh, are bullet fodder for them. Just, yeah, it's really hard to read. It's really devastating. Um, and then later, the next day, they come back looking for the girls. And I don't know if you know anything about the term comfort women, but... Uh, but they know that the, the church is a school for girls and that they find out that some of them, you know, happen to go back to wherever they're from uh, with their parents. But some of those girls are orphans, so they wouldn't have anywhere to go except stay there. And they say that they want them, they're going to feed them and give them nice drinks and, you know, have a good time and dance and song and whatever else. Uh... But they also told the prisoners of war that they were going to take care of them and treat them well and feed them and do these all these other kinds of things. And, you know, the day before, they said some other things that they were going to do. And then uh, what ends up happening is that uh, the older women, the women like you more, the brothel women, they take the place of the young girls and the father tries, you know, and the idea is, the idea is that they will sing, uh, you know, because they also sing choir. Uh, they can be choir girls for this great event that we're going to hold. Um, that's not going to happen. But uh, the women from the brothel sacrifice themselves to protect the young girls from uh, what really will happen. Uh, being made and forced into being comfort women. Uh, and the father, you know, trying to protect these women as well, uh, says, let me go with them. Uh, and the Japanese, you know, no, we don't need you. And they end up shooting him and they take the women away. And then there's a prologue, uh, or an epilogue, sorry, uh, following Xu Juan, uh, one of the main characters that's a, a student uh, and it follows like the things that she's learned about you know what's happened to anybody uh, especially these young <sighs> these young women uh, that were taken and uh, I don't know I was, there's a lot to the it's yeah she she finds out that a lot of them were taken for comfort women and died in different ways suicide trying to fight back uh trying to escape disease uh Zhao Yumo who I assume is this woman the top uh, girl uh she ends up finding her uh later on and she says Zhao Yumo exclaims Xu Juan in low tones, but the woman peered at her in apparent confusion. I'm Meng Xu Juan, Xu Juan went on. The woman shook her head. You've got the wrong person. Yet the voice was Zhao Yumo's. The same slightly off-key voice which had so captivated the non-king playboys of the 1930s when she sang. Uh, Xu Juan did not give up. She pushed her way to her side and said, I was one of the groups of schoolgirls you and the other sisters saved. But it was no good. Zhao Yumo kept denying she knew her. Yet she gave Xu Juan a sidelong glance, just as Zhao Yumo used to, elegantly lifting the chin which had survived the ravages done to the rest of her face, and spoke in Zhao Yumo's Suzhou-accented Nanking dialect. Who is Zhao Yumo? she asked. Uh, I don't... 
there's some other parts that I thought maybe I could read instead, but they're uh, a lot more graphic and I you know, want to uh, save you from that unless you read this book, which I, again, recommend. Uh, she also finds out about Cardamom, who is the girl who's a little bit younger than her. Uh, what happens to her? It's a tough book to read, but it is really good. Uh, and it's pretty good uh, to learn uh, in through fiction, in a way, and maybe get you interested in uh, Chinese history or uh, Japan's actions in China, which is Chinese history or Japanese history as well. Uh, World War history as well, you know, if you want to look at it that way. It, all, it follows the nationalists. I guess they were in Nanjing at the time. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, I know the nationalists and the communists fought against uh, Japan before fighting, or were fighting with each other, I think, and then fought with Japan, and then fought against each other, and then, you know, the rest is history. But uh, anyway, I didn't know that, which is why I want to read uh, The Rape of Nanking. Uh, I forget who the author is, but uh, that is a history book. Uh, about this moment. I'm going on for a long time. Uh, the point is, you should read the book. Maybe I will learn more. Uh, this book made me interested to read more about the history of Nanjing in particular and what happened during this era. So I recommend the book. Thank you. Goodbye.